What is up everyone? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the build vlog. Hopefully you've catched the previous episodes of this because this thing is really coming together nicely. Uh, but today we're going to finally get to lock on this grip here, which I'm excited about because a lot of work has gone into getting that ready and I actually did a few little things uh, between the last video and this one to get this one prepped and put on here. Then we're st we still got to fill in the teeth here on the front. The back have obviously been filled in. And then uh, we'll talk about what powerhouse of a cage we're going to put in this thing and hopefully lock on those covers, if you want to call them that. And then we can start working on that top rail, hopefully. Let's throw you up top and let's get going. All right, so I've shaped in this since the last time we checked in, since the last video. Just did some sanding of the epoxy sculpt. Probably going to have to do a little bit more refining of that, but that's definitely close. Shaped that in there nicely. Worked on this a little bit more so it fit perfectly with this when we get ready to lock this on. And I added some epoxy sculpt inside here because we got these shims right here that are going to go on each side and kind of help us make this fit better and get it get it more square or allow us to make it more square when we uh, lock it on and give us more surface area to lock it on when we do. The one thing that's really nice about the cross, uh, crossbow strife integration is this side is basically exactly the same width. The shells are exactly the same width. So this is exactly the same width. This should be exactly the same as this right here or very, very close to it close enough for us anyways. So if I can get that square there and make sure that this is level with this, that'll be awesome. Another thing we'll look at is the posts right here. This is the center line right there. So that should line up with the center of that. So there's a lot of things you wanna guide off of uh, when trying to get a piece on straight. And you know, you really only get one shot at this, so you wanna make sure you have the best chance of doing that before getting your DevCon on. And that's why I've gone through all these steps to try to prep this and prep this. And not to mention the fact that once we get this on, it's gonna be hard to work in this area. We're still gonna to have to do some work in there. I, it's just gonna be kinda of difficult to do, but uh, we'll figure it out. But the less sanding in there, the better. So go ahead and we'll, epoxy these or devcon these in here okay so i think we're really close to putting this on I have done quite a bit of filing to get these the right width, which was a lot more than I was anticipating, or at least it took longer than I was anticipating, but it should be really nice now, guys. It should be, I mean, it really just fits like a glove, pretty much. May have to pull this together just a little bit as I glue it, uh, just because there's no screw port there. kind of wants to separate just a touch, but, I mean, very, very little, so... We're looking good there, but I was thinking I probably shouldn't do this quite yet once again because I still haven't put my 3D printed magwell on and I think I need to do this now because I've actually changed the shape a little bit of this magwell. I've really rounded it off. So I need to do this just to make sure this is going to match up with that well. I might as well sand this. It's going to be easier to sand now with, without having to worry about this getting in the way. I mean, I'm sure I could do it after, but it's just going to be easier to do it first. So we might as well take care of that. Let's get to it.
right, so work has been done. We have those on, they look good. They've been sanded flush. Everything's been filled in. We filled this in. And I think we're ready to lock the grip on finally after doing a ton of stuff. So that's looking good. We've sanded this down to like a wet sand of 320 so far. So that should be good enough for now. And I think this is fitting really nicely. I'm really happy with how it's fitting after a lot of work actually to get it to that point. But Let's go ahead and uh, mix up some DevCon and get our DevCon on. All right, so that turned out great. It is literally perfect from what I can tell. And if it looks perfect to me, it must be good enough because I have a, well, they say I have a, an eagle eye or a hawk eye, but I would say I have a dead eye. Uh, but yeah, that is, uh, that is looking good. Happy with how that turned out for sure. And we are really starting to come together on this project. Obviously, there's still a ton of work ahead of me, a lot of fabricating still to do which is kind of crazy to think about because I've not really done, I've done some fabricating on other projects, but this is by far the most. So it's a little, uh, a little scary, but I think I can handle it. It's just going to be time consuming, but I definitely have decided that this is going to be up here. We're going to have that diagonal like is like the original crossbow has. I want to try to keep the look of the original crossbow as much as possible. I think this is going to look pretty nice in this region here this is probably going to go back into this somewhere around here i'm going to file this flat or flush and then obviously the picatinny rail I've, i made that flat because this was for i think a some sort of shotgun or something i can't remember now but it was kind of rounded so i had to make that flat but i really like the look of this one because of the groove in the center and the point on the front and then i'll probably make this come out somehow fabricate that out somehow but that should fit on there nicely uh, we still need to figure out how to mount it exactly but hopefully I can do something internally here that allow me to mount that something that I need to work on for sure but the other thing I have been working on behind the scenes is getting these ready to go in here or at least make sure they're going to work well. This one's the one that goes here. You know, I've filed this down quite a bit. There's going to be a piece of polycarbonate like this one right here that goes on the back there. So that's definitely going to take up space. So you just need to make sure that your flywheel or really your motors more than likely aren't going to hit this for the this side, the, the motor shaft make sure it's not going to hit. So I'm going to probably wait to lock these on until I 100% know what cage I'm putting in here and make sure everything's going to work out well. And then on the other side, I think I've gotten this pretty well set. I mean, I took it down about as far as possible, just leaving me a little bit of a lip there. So it'll help me uh, line that up and get some epoxy on there. And then we'll, let me go ahead and take this apart. So we'll have that be there, and then the plastic will go there. So that's still a little bit lower than this part, but it's not as low as I usually like it for modding purposes. So it's going to be tight in there with the, with the wiring and the motor, with the 130 motor, obviously. So I might try to find some thinner polycarbonate. Cause this is, I mean, this is a little bit thick. I don't know what that is. Maybe an eighth of an inch It's probably a little less than that. But yeah, I could probably try to find some, a thinner piece of polycarbonate. So I have a little more space. So I think I'm going to wait to lock these on until I know uh, exactly what I'm dealing with there. But speaking of cages, we need to figure out what cage we're putting in this. And I haven't made a decision for sure yet, and I would like to do some testing before I do because I haven't really tested a lot of these cages for stripes with half-link darts. Obviously, we have the band blaster cage as an option. I don't own one of those, 
I'm not a huge fan of 3D printed cages and I really don't want to put a 3D printed cage in this blaster. If they made a metal one, I would be very enticed to purchase one, but I don't think I want to put a 3D printed cage in here. So I'm not sure that's going to be the thing I choose. I do have quite a few cages, so I might as well use one I have. And one of them is the Eclipse cage. And that has been something that's been around for quite a while. Wasn't the best cage when it came out. We had a lot of issues with dart decapitation and dart wear and whatnot. Uh, the flywheels are extremely difficult to put on and to get perfectly straight. These are the Gen 2 flywheels. I've never tested with the Gen 2 flywheels and I only have this one set of Gen 2 flywheels even though I had three cages at one time. I have a lot of the Gen 1 flywheels but uh, yeah, this one I like because these are white and what I really want are some neon yellow wheels. So white fly wheels that I can dye would be the best option. I don't know if I can dye these though. So if you know if these are dyeable, I don't know if these are nylon or not. If they're nylon, I know I could dye them, but I don't know if that's what they are. They might be Delrin. I don't know how well Delrin takes dye. So, you know, I'm not sure exactly what they are, but would love to have some neon flywheels so if I could dye those that would be awesome also motors I might I may try to get some band blaster motors if I use this flywheel cage because I think that, that might be a decent option for something with this with a high high crush but I'm not not sure I mean I know fangs are okay in this too you know if you want a smaller battery a 2s battery you can get probably, I probably get, well, I know with full lengths you can get 160 to 170, so a little bit less probably with half lengths would be my guess. So, you know. But all things to think about, I mean, we'll see. This is a build that's more for aesthetic purposes. I do want it to perform well, but top, top tier flywheel performance isn't really my main goal. Having high quality internals is my main goal. So this is definitely probably top on the list as an option I will have to modify the dart guide because this is too long uh, no matter if you're I was using you know normal full length nerf mags or especially talon mags this is going to interfere with the magazine and it interfered with a most other aftermarket full length magazines also I know it was an issue so we'll have to cut that down which kind of sucks but I have the cage I might as well modify it so that's the way that goes Another possible option, if I don't end up going with that, is the Tsunami Cage, which I've had for a while. This is number 21. I was one of the original purchasers, I guess, backers of this Tsunami Cage, so I got one, a low number there, my favorite number, 21. But this, I think, is a little less performance than that, but this is definitely a good option and could be a possibility. Probably won't be able to get yellow flywheels, though, to fit in this, so <laughs> I don't think... Uh, I don't think, I don't know what other flywheels could possibly fit in this cage. I'll have to look. Obviously, these were the launch edition wheels, which are kind of cool. It'd be kind of nice to have those go with the cage. But, uh, yeah, I don't think this can take any of the bigger, like, howler wheels or anything like that. So, uh, I'm not I'm not 100% sure. I can't remember exactly what the performance was supposed to be. But this is also more meant for full-length darts. And that's the problem with most of these cages is they really were designed more for HVZ or just a little bit above that at the time, and they were meant for full-length darts. So we'll see. I could also change the flywheels out and get some really high crush, which I set up over here. And yeah, those howler wheels and that would look good. That would definitely coordinate well. So that is also an option. I just don't know if uh, 38.5, I think, is what the spacing is on this is going to be too much to get, you know, and how that's going to affect darts and whatnot. So I need to test both these options and kind of go from there. But that's where my head's at. That's what I'm thinking. Let me know what you think, what you, what you think uh, will work out best. And I'll take, take note. But yeah, I think we'll figure out something awesome to put in this for sure. We got a lot of options. All right, I think that's about it for this episode, the fourth episode of the Kenner Strife crossbow uh, integration, however we want to refer to this thing. Really need to come up with a name. Help me out, guys. Maybe if you have a good name for this thing, uh, let me know in the comments section. But uh, yeah, the name I usually don't try to force. I let it come to me as I, I uh, create the build or even finish it. So 
but I haven't really thought of one for this one yet. But if you have any ideas, I, I'd love to hear them. Uh, let me know what you think on the cage I should use, if there's another cage that maybe I should try to find and put in this thing. I have a lot of cages, but I don't really have a ton of metal high crust cages except for the ones I showed you. Most of the cages I have are all for like HVZ in full length, so not going to work great in this build. The ones I showed you should work nicely if I can modify them and tweak them. And I really would love to have some yellow, neon yellow flywheels. I think that would be awesome. So, but yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know any of your thoughts and opinions uh, in the comments section. Please make sure you like and subscribe. If you're not, ring the bell for notifications so you don't miss a video. Uh, share with your friends if you're enjoying this build series. And as always, guys, peace out.